Good day, friends. It's uh, about 6.30 Sunday evening here in uh, Bayfield on the uh, veranda of the Little Inn where we are staying. Interesting sort of whooshing sound. It might be coming... God, we're slightly too far from the lake, although it's only a few blocks from Lake Erie. Uh, probably the wind and the trees, but it's a lovely sound. And I wanted to do, uh, it's been bothering me <laughs> all afternoon. This morning, uh, you may have seen the, the shots uh, we took of us reading The New Yorker. And uh, that was at a breakfast. And um, I had told uh, my wife, Cynthia, about uh, Michael Posner's quote from his upcoming volume 3 oral biography of Leonard Cohen where the uh, pe uh, poet Peter Van Turn spoke uh, or wrote uh, uh, of another occasion where Leonard Cohen was immediately responsive to a request for help. Van Turn had asked for help for another poet who I believe was either financial difficulties or financial difficulties and illness, I can't quite remember. And he was mentioning how swift Cohen was to offer, I believe, several thousand dollars to help the man. And uh, it just reminded me of all the other occasions in the, in the, the, the first two volumes of the uh, Posner's oral biography where other people speak of uh, Cohen's immense generosity to people in need, sometimes unknown recording artists that needed help to get some studio time, you know, different things. And, um, you know, uh, it just reminded me of that as something I had been very impressed with reading the biography. Uh, you know, we hear of the, uh, the great. Uh, adventurousness of his life and his uh, <laughs> love of chasing women and his, uh, you know, periods of great creativity followed by, uh, you know, long dry periods and uh, his uh, little craziness on tour. <laughs> hey, let's drop acid and do a concert. So, um, but this morning I felt a presence, and it reminded me of Cohen's presence, psychic presence, of uh, if you've seen my video on Anthony Bourdain, my contact, the chef, uh, who passed tragically in what seems to have been a suicide some years ago, and um, he came to me while I was watching at my local theatre the biographical movie of his life and it was quite strong and uh, this was not quite so strong but Cohen was definitely there and um, I find spirits generally but artists particularly can be responsive in a telepathic way to post-mortem interest shown in their work and um, um, let me just couple more things before I give you a bit of a translation of what he said to me. I think also this uh, very recent release is just coming out. The documentary on the song and the fame of the song Hallelujah, which I imagine covers many, many versions of the song, of which, of course, we know there are many. And um, I, I believe Michael Posner's autobiography has spread around the English-speaking world and perhaps even into translations at this point. And I certainly hope it does because uh, people uh, <laughs> who uh, speak, uh, you know, German and Japanese and uh, French will certainly be interested. Um, but Cohen wanted to communicate his gratefulness for the love and kind wishes. That's something a little stronger than kind. Um, 
that he feels as a spirit coming to us from people in the physical world. And uh, there's a, well, there was a sense of, you know, I'm not really deserving of that. And, uh, you know, it was always a humility with Leonard. And uh, it's still there. He, he senses the, uh, the less than perfect human being within the artist. And if you go through his uh, songs and uh, poems, you'll see that. And um, uh, whether you, you know, what aspect of him you choose to identify with, you know, um, that's up to you as a listener and uh, an appreciator. But definitely a strong sense of, to me, as a psychic that's going to be on YouTube, as this will be, will I please communicate this gratefulness from Leonard to us for the ongoing um, waves of love and appreciation and, you know, we miss you, Leonard, which we do. Um, and spirits do feel this, believe me. And um, even if it's just... Uh, um, a quote-unquote regular person like a grandmother or a grandfather feeling the love of, of the extended family. It's the same thing. But with artists, and obviously artists of international resound, it's even greater, more intense. And they actually do have to be instructed in ways to sort of turn that intensity down. It's a bit overwhelming. It can be. And there's mentions in uh, old theosophical books about uh, stars of the silent film era being taught in the spirit world to cope with these waves of love coming from fans. So there's a, there's a history to this. And um, obviously it's ongoing. And uh, it was a small communication. It wasn't long or dramatic. It was like Leonard whispering in my ear, listen, you know, I heard you you do this, I've been told that you will communicate this, will you please assist in this uh, as a favor to me? And certainly, Leonard, I will assist. I'm very glad to. And uh, I'm a great appreciator of uh, your songs and poems. And um, the first time I heard Sisters of Mercy, it almost broke my heart. As you can see, I'm still a little emotional. Um, and that was when I was 15, by the way. That's a long time ago. John Peel played it on his show and said when he first heard it, he felt like he was waking up on a different planet. And when you hear things like that when you're 15, it, uh, it never leaves you. Anyway... Uh, that's it for now, and uh, I hope you appreciate this little uh, contribution to spirit communication and the love of Leonard Cohen. Thank you.